Hey everybody, Happy New Year and welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, Vincent LaRusso and I are going to be discussing 2023 and what we think is in store for us in this upcoming year. We'll not only make some predictions, but talk about the overall state of rock and roll for all the bands and music that we all grew up loving. This is a really fun episode. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So why don't we jump in and let's get started. My buddy, my partner in crime, my comrade, the man with plenty of dances, Vincent LaRusso. How you doing, buddy? Hola! Happy New Year! <laughs> uh, you know, we never spoke really before New Year's Eve, uh, since New Year's Eve, I should say, right? New Year's Eve, you had a gig, right? I did. I did. How'd that go? It How was that excellent. Go? Lots of fun. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, it was nice to, to get, a, get out and perform. Um, I'm not a huge fan of New Year's Eve, that whole thing. Me neither, usually. I hate to say it. I hate to be morbid. I always say it's one year closer to death. You know, it's just... It's just it, <laughs> that is not kind. I know. It just, it's, <laughs> it's a terrible way to look at it, but it's a, I don't... I You know, you get to a certain age, you don't look forward to getting older. You just yep. don't. You know, you know, I don't think I'm in the uh, minority on that. Mm -hmm. i know so but uh but anyways it was nice it was it was an enjoyable evening we had a lot of fun and uh it was nice to be um celebrating the night out with my bandmates and some friends and stuff like that so now did you did you guys play through up to midnight and then after midnight so we had time to set so that about 20 minutes before midnight we stopped and Mm -hmm. then we waited for the ball to drop and then it was funny because (laughs) the bar wanted us to play the cheers theme so this was a okay. first for me this is the first thing i actually sang Before the cheers midnight, theme. they wanted you to play the cheers no theme? right after right right after okay that's all right so, so i guess the the I, i'm not sure but the owners i don't know if it's his wife or whatever and excuse me i i, I don't know mm-hmm. she had spoke spoken to the band leader it was not me um dawn and said you know we have a request so like literally like we rehearsed on a Thursday night, I think it was, and we're, that day I was with Paul. He was over working on music, and she's like, "Can you guys learn the Cheers theme?" And I'm do 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 do. He tried to play the whole thing, <laughs> and I'm like, "Making your way in the morning, that is everything you got." <laughs> and I'm doing like the whole Cheers thing, which like, did I ever think I'd be singing the Cheers theme? It was kind of fun and cool. Now, if you could have um, chose a different TV theme song, what would have you chose? Oh, probably the Happy Days theme. <laughs> that. that... That one's That's in the one jukebox behind me. Yeah. I have the happy It's one things. of my favorites. Yeah. More, more than three skills. Or, well, yeah, The Greatest American <laughs> Heroes was another one of my favorites. I know another you had one that one. that's in the jukebox. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those those are some of my favorites. So, yeah, it was kind of cool. They, they, everyone was all excited because they were like, they weren't expecting that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a little, that was fun. And the other thing I had never, I had never uh, learned or, or performed before, which I couldn't believe how much fun I had doing it was, and I don't know if you're familiar, and I, I don't think you are, because I don't think we've ever really talk, spoke about it, is the uh, the song from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, um, Time Warp. Yeah, I mean, I've so, seen it yeah, the movie once years yeah. ago. I'm not so, huge on the movie the way a lot of you guys are. Right. And I never was either. I never went to the whole, you know, you go and you perform in the stands. But I've seen the movie several times. But it was actually... You know, it was it was it was fun. It was uh, surprisingly, I was like, you know, this is this is a lot of fun. I could get into this, you know, and I think the reason why, because I was like, why am I enjoying this so much? 
You know, for what reason you could I possibly... You enjoy You love, you to, love do to do it. it. <laughs> no, that's Ding! cool what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of many things, you know. Uh, that, that's true. This is where, where people uh, do the, uh, the eye roll. Uh-huh. But, um, <laughs> but the reason why, it's like the guy in the starts off, he's like, it's astounding. Time is <laughs> fleeting. Madness. So I got to do that whole voice. <laughs> okay. And then he's like, I remember doing the time warp. And then I start screaming that part. And I was like, this is fun. I could get into this, you know. So that was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a very very nice evening. Did you have a nice yeah. evening? I, you know, for us it was a very quiet evening. I just hung out with my wife and my son, and we did something I've never done before. Believe it or not, I hmm? watched the movie My Cousin Vinny. Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, oh, is that movie about the? The two boys who ride in the car, yeah, and then they get yeah, you've heard of it, mistaken huh? identity. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, yeah. is Herman Munster in that movie? Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> yes. Oh, and the Karate yes, Kid, it... the Karate Kid's in the movie too. Oh, the Karate Kid. Yeah. Oh, okay. and some guy that was in Goodfellas, and the guy from Goodfellas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Goodfellas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, it's a good movie. Oh, you should say wonderful. it. You should say yeah. it. Yeah, I will yeah. one of these days. Yeah. yeah. So. We actually started watching it and we finished it at like literally three or four minutes to midnight. So that was good. It was like oh, a good. perfect way. Nice, yeah. relaxing. It was fun hanging out with the family, just nice and peaceful. Yeah. I'm not a big, like you said, I'm not a big New Year's Eve guy at all. In fact, I was saying to my son that probably of the 50 plus New Year's Eves I've been alive for, probably 40 of them I've spent at home. Yeah. 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 That, I'm very similar to that. I'm trying to think like I remember 96, 97 going to see Kiss. And they missed the countdown for New Year's Eve, which was hilarious. So, um, mm. you know, they, at the they, show? no, no, you weren't with me. Uh, maybe you were at the show by yourself, but you weren't. I didn't invite you to that show. Thanks. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I got you just let's say I didn't invite you to that yeah, well, show. Of course, I you didn't say you, you didn't say you. I don't think you were at that show. No, no, you no. no bluntly you bluntly said <laughs> you were not invited. You were not welcome <laughs> in my right. presence at that Your time. Your presence wasn't wanted at that Your night. Your presence wasn't wanted or required <laughs> That's or needed. Right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. I just remember it being freaking frigid that night. It was absolutely mm. freezing. And like I said, I, I forget what song it was. It might have been um, 100,000 Years Kiss Finish. And then they were going to Dick Clock up on the screens. Um, they're going to count down the new it year. Sounds so familiar. That's Except why I feel like they I was freaking there. missed the countdown. Like literally, the confetti was falling. They're just like, "Happy New Year!" I'm like, "All right." With the one time I go out, too? yeah, tears were falling. Yes, exactly. But I finally <laughs> go out one New Year's Eve, and I missed the countdown for New Year's Eve. Yeah. So, so it's kind of pretty funny, actually. I think I may have been at the show. Maybe uh, not with you, but you know, I don't know. I think I had a, a sign outside. Keep Vincent Larusso out. So I don't think you probably, were there. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. But speaking of New Year's Eve, did you see Peter Chris release the new video? I did. Okay, I did. Uh, that's a little tempered. A little yeah. tempered. Your reaction um, there? <laughs> yeah, it was good. I, 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 I personally uh, enjoyed his um, when he did uh, "Don't Let Me Down" a little yep. bit better. I, I, me personally, um, again. Just to see him thawed and and excited <laughs> and singing and chewing the his gum. Is the proper term, yeah. terminology. Yeah, and chewing his gum when he does his thing. You know, yeah. I mean, he sounded good. You know, it's it's again. Uh, what is he seventy eight now? So yeah, he just, just had his birthday at the end of December. Either seventy seven so. or seventy eight. I don't know. But he's uh, he's obviously up there in age. Yeah. So well, it's great. You know, it's great to see. I see you know, the recent pictures of him. He looked great. You know, and see him good. singing, and he looks. Look, he always looks happy. That's that's all I care about. If you're not doing, if you're not with the band anymore, and you're you're, you're riding into sunset of your of your you know your golden years, golden, <laughs> be happy. Right. Remember when you when your favorite song was "Don't Worry, Be Happy" and you tortured me uh, with that song? I don't know song? if that was my favorite song, but I used to like, torture you with it. <laughs> you used to. That was a part period of time where I had here <laughs> that. That and it's only human. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh God! Every time I come over, be with this Billy Joel song. You know? uh. I can remember all the songs that you became a monster with. You know, like when you got your hand on something, it was just like monster, and it was never as worse as the. I also, freaking... remember when I got the monster album. Yes, yes, <laughs> but it's, it was never as worse as when you went through that punk rock era and buying all those Generation X records and all the crap that like, I just. I just wanted to crack you over the head with those records. I just was like, you know, but 
So I what's funny fans out there? I no, know no, that no, they're no. Fans so out so there. what? What's funny is I was actually thinking about on New Year's Eve. One of my favorite New Year's Eves was I think it was '83, and I was younger. I was at my mom's friend's house, and they had MTV, and I didn't have MTV at the time. Right, living in mm-hmm. Brooklyn, we didn't have MTV yet. You know that, mm-hmm. and that evening was billy idol was one of the performers on mtv new year's eve and he performed right before and right after midnight um and i know right after midnight he did rebel yell um Mm -hmm. so which was the new hot single at the time but anyway that evening so that was at that time i was a little bit of a billy idol fan but he did during that show some generation x songs and i didn't know what they were i'm like these are good. And that that's stuff. So it's funny. It kind of ties us all into what we're talking about New Year's Eve. And you didn't even know that, that mm-hmm. it was that performance. And I actually watched it this year, New Year's Eve <laughs> again, because I haven't mm-hmm. seen it in years. And I'll be damned if it's still not a freaking great performance. And he does a ready, steady go and kiss me. Dead. Man, some great generations X songs. Well, you see, you know, and I'm picking on generation X. And I honestly, I think I had, you know, I always had more of a problem Ooh. with some of that. <laughs> 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 Of the Sex Pistols stuff. Yeah, so you were never a Sex Pistols fan the way <laughs> right, I was. Yeah, um, yeah. But no, the Generation X stuff to me was... <laughs> and here, here you go. Ready for yeah. a fun fact? Yeah. Do you know what the most popular Generation X song is? Uh, The City? <laughs> <laughs> Dancing with Myself is a Generation yes. X well, song. Well, you know what? I should have known that because... You should have. I I'm cover, disappointed I, in you. Well, because I do co- cover it and it does say Generation X on it. Yes. Yep, yeah. it was originally yeah. written by Billy Idol and their guitar player, something James, not Rick, I don't know, whatever yeah. the guy's name is, I don't know, I forget. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that's originally a Generation X song, which Billy Idol then put on his solo album. That's when it became a hit, but it's mm. it's a Generation X song. So mm, for all you people out there say, oh, punk rock, blah, 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 I don't like punk rock, you probably love that song. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Fair yeah. parent, fair parent, fair all right. parent. So, but the Peter Chris thing, it sounds like then... You were excited to see that New Year's yeah. Eve, but but you know, no, I'm it, not downplaying. It like I'm, it wowed you. I'm, all right, I don't want to downplay it. it. It was like I said, it was great to see him. I just said, I I and I liked when he did the "Don't you, Don't Let Me Down" yeah. as far as performance wise, and I just I enjoyed that more. Yeah. It was good to see him get, like I said, excited. It's an upbeat tune, and he was getting into it. He's he was putting in that you know that Peter Chris vibe, and I mean, it was all great. Trust yep. you know, yep, you know yep. so I'm not. So when we look forward then to 2023, if Peter Chris is not going to do more shows like he did last year, last year, a little guest appearances, would you like to see him do more videos like that? Yeah. I, I you know, look, it obvious that he still has the passion. He still has the voice. You know, we've seen him play, you know, go behind the kit, right? He did it for, for Creatures Fest, right? He, yeah. I think he did Strange yeah. Ways. Is that what he played on? Strange uh, Ways? Yeah. He played Strange Ways and then he played um, Hooked on Rock and Roll with Bruce Killer. Right. So, you know, look, even if he's physically, because I know he's had some issues in the past with his back or whatever it is. I think he had knee surgery up, last year. A knee surgery, yes. go up and sing in front. Like, you, are you not going to go see a Peter Chris show because he's not playing drums? Of course not. No. I yeah, would go. me either. And I don't, I don't think how. most fans are not going to because they know, like, well, how many more Peter Chris shows can potentially we have? Yep. You know? You know, so that's why I always say I'm very fortunate to have gone to that last show at the cutting room that he, he announced that time I was there. And it was all good. And uh, I don't ever have to look back at that as as something you could throw in my face. (laughs) Well, Uh, it wasn't the same as being there for the full-blown Peter Chris I'm being sarcastic. You're not even catching my drift there. (laughs) I guess not. I guess not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) I'll I'll always throw that back in your face. But but you got a small redemption there. there. Small, but it was very small compared to him doing a full-blown, you know. Well, then speaking of Peter Chris maybe doing a show or another show, whatever, and, and I was at his final show. 2023 do you think kiss does finally their final show of the end of the road tour i'm not convinced i think i mean it is i know it's very early it's the third of january but i think by now look when we went to the um kiss cruise that year they had announced that what was it that june or july was supposed to be the remember the countdown was on the thing yep Uh, yep they had announced, I guess it wasn't a year in advance. It was like less than a year, right? It was at that point. less than a year if I, if I have my timeline right. Yeah. I, I, ju- I just find it hard to believe at this point now. They did say that they're going to, about going, they're going to be on the cruise, but had they had they worried again, and you always remember this, it's yeah, going to so, be so there's gonna non-makeup. Be, right, non-makeup. Exactly. There's going to be no cruise this year, and next year there's going to be a cruise, but no wait, wait. makeup. 
Wait, wait. There's no cruise at all this year. No cruise. No cru- No kiss cruise in 2023. Oh, I didn't realize that. Somehow yeah. I miss, I missed that. I thought they were going to have a kiss cruise this year. No. Nah. Okay. Nope. So what that means to me is that they're so limited on that time and schedule for that week. They actually need to f- have dates to book and wherever they're going to want to book. You know, and that's what I, I, that's how I see that. And I took it to mean potentially that, yeah, this is it. This is the last year with the makeup shows and they're not going to do a cruise. Maybe because like you said, maybe they have shows booked. Maybe they don't, who knows, but the fact that they may do a cruise in 24 and it's not makeup and they're not going to perform the indoor show makes me think 23 is really going to be it this time in terms of real lo- you know, long tours like this with makeup and all. Mm-hmm. Eh, I guess so. I don't know. A part of me always is like, eh, they're coming back one more. You know what <laughs> I mean? I know eventually it's going to end. I do realize that, but I, I could see it spilling into 2024. Um, um, and I've, done this what for the last three years and i'm going to be wrong again i'm sure but i'm going to say that before the end of this year it'll be the final end of the road show how long when did this road start january 2019 i think what january 31st 2019 and of course you know with covid it right. you know lost you know a year right. whatever it was oh man okay yeah well so so if a final show does happen in some capacity but we think that there may be one-off shows in 24 and who knows what else. But I'll put you on a spot and you don't have to give an exact number, but you could just say a lot, medium, or not at all. How much are you willing to spend on that show? Well, let me think about that. So I think I spent for the, for the, for the second row seat in Madison Square Garden, I'll call it first row because I like to pretend it was first row. Basically, <laughs> it was first row. It was so close. Uh-huh. I think I, sp- I think I spent, and I don't mind saying, you know, mm-hmm. I spent about eight hundred dollars for right. that show. Yep. So I certainly would do the same for this for our final show, like in New York. You know. But what if it was eight hundred dollars and you're in the nosebleed seats? Uh, I mean, it'd be harder to swallow, but just to be in that building yeah. and and hearing the last song and seeing them, I mean, it's probably gonna get me emotional just talking about it now, but. <laughs> That's going to be hard to, to miss. So emotional, emotional, baby. Every so, time. Yeah, so. <laughs> Notice I didn't try to hit that note. <laughs> no. In the, and back though. in the day, you, you, you could have. Oh, man. I could hit five registers above that note, actually. That's back true. In the That's true. That's true. Oh, man. So, so what about you? Well, let me start off this way. I am ready for the end of the road to end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hate to say it like that, but. You know, the tour started 2019. I've seen it 13 times, I think, maybe 14 times since they started. Um, I've seen, I think, six or seven slight variations of set lists. I've seen different stage configurations between the pods, the stage Stanley flies out to. I've seen all different configurations. So I kind of feel like I'm good. And I feel like if it lingers beyond this year, it's like, come on, guys, uh, enough is enough. So I hate to say it like this. I'm kind of hoping that the final show does take place in 23. I'm ready. Well, I'm mentally well, ready. Well, let, let me put it to you this way. Yeah. You could potentially live another 35 years. I hope that's so. Just, I hope okay, so. Okay. Okay. That's, that's not, mm-hmm. that's fair to say. Yeah. Could you imagine going another 35 years without seeing your favorite band of all time? Are you that okay with that? Now, now they, of course, they're older than us. So, right. Right. you of know, course. they're not, not going to play when they're 101, you know, <laughs> no, of course, not. you know, but, but you understand my point. Yeah, I'll say this. I do feel fulfilled and satisfied. And I honestly, I and I've said this from the start of the end of the road tour. At the end of the end of the road tour, I think I'm good with not going to see them again. Um, for various reasons, which I don't want to get into all the nitty gritty details right now, but um I feel satisfied and fulfilled. So, you know, to go back to your initial get, question. Can I Go get ahead. into the nitty gritty details? Oh, <laughs> uh, we we don't have time on this. <laughs> My nitty gritty details, but yeah, anyway, go ahead. ahead. No, no, but um, so for me, I kind of feel like if there's a couple local shows during the year twenty three, I'll go. I'll probably have a lot of fun, but I'm ready. Uh, in fact, yeah. I, I'll say this: I get more excited over stuff, and I want to talk about this also. Stuff like the Creatures box set, I now get more excited about stuff like that. And hear an unreleased songs than I do 
seeing the tour for the 14th. And well, that's part, part of it's my fault. I mean, when you go to see the same show 13 times, at some point it's like, all right, you know, that's I've seen true. This and, and you're, and you like some other people we know who've seen them like 175 times, you know, but you know, the one thing I'll say about that is I really don't want to see any band when they really start to diminish their skills. You know, right. I just don't really Agreed. want that. You know, it's different. Like, you know, you go see Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson is always going to sound. I'm not picking up Willie Nelson, but <laughs> no. let's face fact. Willie Bob Nelson's Dylan, always Willie in Nelson, the, yeah. the well, vocals are what they are. Right. So, but with these hard rock bands, metal bands that had these incredible, you know, ranges and stuff like that to get to these ages, which I want to touch upon something. I don't know why I want to go on a Sammy Hagar thing for a second, but I just saw something the other night and it kind of bothered me. Oh, if, I no. could, if I could segue. Go right so, ahead. Segway. All right. Let me do this. I, I, I know you're a huge fan of Sammy Hagar. Big fan. Okay. Huge fan. Both you're solo big, and Van Halen. Right. You're a bigger fan than Sammy than I am. Okay. Probably. I will, yes. I'll, okay. And I've always said I favored the Dave era more, and I think you favored the, the Sammy era more. Okay. Yeah, you know, look, and that's not to diminish what Dave and that era means, right? Because there is mm-hmm. no Sammy, no Sammy era without Dave. I know that, right. and okay. Dave is perhaps one of the greatest frontmen of all time. So that's you know, okay. nothing about that. I just happen to like Sammy Hagar. Okay, so here's here's the point I want to make. I was watching a show from '95, uh, whatever that tour was. It was I could probably write before Balance Sharon. Star. The Balance right. Star, yeah. Okay, my yeah. favorite, so- my favorite Sammy album with. With Van Halen. Okay, right. Okay. So, and I was watching that. And you know what? Dave gets picked on a lot for good reason. Like, uh, he's like, he doesn't sing the songs. Mm -hmm. But although I was watching like Us Festival, which was 82. And and Dave is doing the songs pretty much verbatim. You know, he he was great. You know, he's not, he's not doing... Again, an Ace Freely where he's talking the song or he starts. Listen, I don't want to hear any talking about love with a new melody. I want to hear any any song. I don't right. care who the artist is. I want to hear photograph like photograph. I want to hear, you know, you know, whatever the song is. And then I was watching the show and, you know, Sammy Hagar is just kind of doing like what Dave was doing in a lot of the songs, quite honestly. Do you yeah. remember what was it? I'm assuming it was a professionally shot show, right? Oh yeah, that's probably probably Toronto '95 because there was a pay per view. Man, you see that? Yeah. You like? Yeah. And I did not even yeah. know you were going to talk about that, and I knew exactly well, what show. I now, think that's now, August of '95, if I remember right. It yeah. was on pay per view. And, and let me say, it's not that he was bad. I'm not saying that, and he definitely was lazier. I want to call it that with the Van Halen Dave songs, and I kind of get that. Sure. You know, for him to, and I thought about it. He's got to sing Panama. He's singing Jump. He's singing, you know, uh, uh, what you call Ain't talking about love. Ain't really talking about me. love. Yeah. And I'm not saying he was straying so, but he's definitely, you know, was not doing it exactly like the record. And it was kind of reminding me it was Dave-esque, I was going to say. Maybe not as extreme, but it kind of took me by surprise. And then even, you know, in songs like, you know, like in Dreams. Oh, baby cry, you're right, baby, baby, mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah. You know, I'm, and I'm, that's horrible. But, and, and but, you know, it's you're right, they know it is, you've cried. Like he was, he, mm. you know, and then he, you know, and I understand you're doing however many shows a year, even in his prime, and, and maybe he wasn't in so much in his prime. Because remember, that album was what, 86 Dreams was on, or was that on yes. OUA? Yeah, no, 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 that was on the first one, 5150. Right. Okay. So that was 85, 86. What was that, Eve? I always get that mixed up. 85, 85. Yeah. So this is 10 years later. Yeah. It's 10 years later. years later. That's an extremely, all those songs, dreams. I mean, he's in the stratosphere. He's not quite like, he's not quite like Paul Stanley, my way territory, you know, but you know, so I understand why he alters that melody. I'm like, Oh, why'd he go down there? I mean, you're doing a hundred and something shows or whatever it is for the tour. And you know, you're going to have to save yourself or find your spots. You know what I mean? Sure. But I, I don't know. I, I just was watching that because going through YouTube and I thought of you and I thought about, you know, how many people pick on Dave. And I was just like, you know, I, I had watched the Us Festival recently and some of the other stuff. And I was just like, you know what? I think, you know, when Dave really got popular and, and as my friend Paul said, he started doing the like, you yeah. know, doing the thing <laughs> with the microphone and all the faces uh-huh. and all right. the sh- real shtick Dave. Right. That's when he started to do his like, you know, you yep. know. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. No, look, I tend to agree. So, and I'm not sure exactly how we got on that whole Van Halen kick. I mean, because I, I said I had, you know. <laughs> but, but it's I'm, okay. because I'm, it was, I'm very disruptive. No, that's okay. Because it was actually something I did want to bring up. And that was, I think it was a year ago today, actually, when we were recording this, that um, 
Dave announced that he canceled his Vegas residency. I did see that today. So they, so right. So my question to you, do you think we see him again in 23 or ever again on stage? Wait a second. I thought I saw something today that it was on again and it's, it was sold out. Or is that? No, uh, no, 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 no. I posted today that it was a year ago today that he canceled. Oh, is that what At I, first he canceled New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And then last okay. year, January oh, 3rd, he canceled. Saw that? Yes, he canceled the rib. But it's a good thing you read that really clearly. Thanks. Uh, I was at work. Hello. <laughs> Job. Right. Just uh, so you know, I wasn't paying attention right. to personal stuff. <laughs> Touche. Okay. Um, no, but it was a year yeah. ago today. He canceled the remaining dates of the residency. So my question, do you think we see Dave on stage ever again? I think we kind of touched upon this a little bit at some point recently. And I, and I had said, you know, there was there were a lot of rumors about his health. You know, it almost sounded like he was on death's door at one point. I think yeah. we were, you but know, when he so, made this announcement that he canceled the shows last year, he, he alluded to health things. And yeah, yeah, it, it didn't sound good reading between the lines, but who knows? You know, doesn't seem to be anything happening tomorrow. God forbid, but it doesn't seem yeah. to be. I mean, I, I, I it's really a hard thing to answer because I think this really all is contingent on what his health is. And I think people really don't know. Yep. I, he's made some comments recently about, you know, him writing with Eddie, which was nice to to read and stuff like that. And Agreed. he was talking about yeah. the chemistry. Did, did you listen to that interview that he did? I didn't listen to it. I just saw some uh-huh. blurbs from it. So I didn't yeah. even know there was a, an, an interview. Well, like, it's on so. his own YouTube channel and it's like okay. 20 minute. I don't mean this to be negative, but like a 20 minute ramble. You know, mm-hmm. typical David Lee Roth where he just goes off on all different tangents or whatever. If you read the article, you probably got the main highlights. But um. Well. So, you know, we spoke before about Peter Chris too in the Dirty Living video. It's also nice to me just when I hear from Dave. And again, I was a biggest Sammy guy. You know, I was like 55, 45 between Sammy and Dave. It's not like I really disliked one or really liked one of, over the other. But um, whenever Dave puts out something, I put a smile on my face because it's like you said before, whether it's the health, whether it's Peter Chris getting up there in age, Dave getting up there in age, we don't know what 2023 and 2024 when forward is going to bring. And anytime mm-hmm. I hear from these guys, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, of course. So. Yeah, I mean, listen, it would be. I would listen. We, I, I think this is what we talked about. Um, how surprised we were when we saw him open for Kiss. We weren't yeah. expecting that much. Remember, we were like, not at all. Know. Yeah. And then we were thought, oh my God, he was singing the songs like you know the original. The band sounded yeah. great. I mean, if I knew he was coming to a club nearby or something like that, I'd go see him again. I certainly Agreed. would not even think twice about it. Agreed. But you then know? 2023, just simple yes or no. Do you think we see him on stage again? No. I hate to say I agree, but I, I think you're right. Just because you haven't heard any build up to anything. Now, of course, he could throw something together, I assume. And, and it's only January 3rd. But based on what we were reading last year, I got to figure out whatever it is he's dealing with. He's still dealing with a fighting, God forbid, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but and I think he had some kind of like foot surgery, but oh, yeah, the, yeah, but all right, so yeah, I'm gonna throw another one at you. Mm-hmm. Ozzy Osbourne, do we see him on stage again? Yes or no? Yes, with Keith Richards, because that's a guaranteed <laughs> show. Those guys will, those guys will never, yeah, you know, I think they're just gonna go on. Ozzy, I, I mean, again, yeah, what would, would that shock you? You know, I don't know, but again, a year ago would have yeah. shocked me, but last year he did a couple like one-off type things where he did a couple of songs like at a football event or something like that. And it was like, all right, you know, maybe who knows? <laughs> Look, there's a, there's a lot involved in getting somebody up on the stage night after night or whatever right. you're going to do to get somebody. Well, he's recorded a record. Yeah. But you, you could do that very, you could schedule that very loosely. Yep. You could cancel it. Once you can't start canceling shows because he's not up to it or he's not feeling well. Or no, whatever. I, mean, I don't think know. either one of them could do a full tour. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But could Ozzy do a handful of shows, like two or three shows in a month? I, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think we'll see anything of of a tour from him. No, honestly, I, agree. I don't think so. Okay. You know what? I you wish know? I wish Ozzy would. And I'm not saying he's healthy enough to do this. But you know how Billy Joel does the residency at the Garden, where he does one show a month there. If mm-hmm. Ozzy did something like that, I'm not saying over a residency where he's there playing there for 10 years, but maybe over a three or four month period, he says like on the first of every month, whatever mm-hmm. it is, I'm going to play, I'm going to pick the garden simply because it's here in New York. I'm going to play the garden the first of February, March, April, May. And those are my final shows. That would freaking be incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Who knows I if he could him... do it even for an hour and a half. I don't, I don't know. know. You know, I don't know. Cause I saw him with Sabbath. When was he touring with Sabbath again? Was that Ooh, like two thousand? That must have been like 2015, 16. Yeah, in that 16, time yeah. yeah. And 
it, it was okay. You know what I mean? You could yeah. tell like it was diminished, diminished, you know what yeah. I mean? Again, oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I, and again, I don't, really want to see my heroes that way that's not i mean it's a selfish thing like oh but i want to see them play but then you go to see you know like to want them to go out there but then you know it's like it's like the bon jovi effect i don't mean to pick on john but i don't really want to i don't we went to several bon jovi shows together back in the day yeah. i don't want to go to a bon jo i love that music and i don't want to see him like that i've seen the videos it's not a, that's something i don't want to you know watch because it's not quite honestly enjoyable and I feel for people who, who have to struggle at this point of their careers. Yep. They're making the effort. I give them all the credit, but that's not what I, how I want to remember my last show of seeing that artist. So you know? the room is uh, that Sam Bora may come back for some shows with Bon Jovi in 23. Yeah. If I he does, played... any interest? No. Wow. Quick no. No. Not if, 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 if. If Bon, if John is going to sound like a you know a mangled muppet, I don't do not want to <laughs> mangled I, muppet. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. Right. I don't mean to pick on him. I just don't want. It's not. You know the thing is, tickets aren't like they were back in the day. I remember. I remember exactly where I was. I was in Wallbaums in the back, over in where all the 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 the, the food would come in when I worked yep. as a stock boy whatever the frick i was <laughs> and i was on the phone with you with the pay phone and i was like 55 dollars to see bon jovi i'm like i don't know if i could swing that you know right. this is a scalp this, ticket right this was like you know 86 or whatever it was you know you know and that's you know that's that's 55 you know 86 money which i you know with the inflation was that 300 dollars now whatever right right so i wound up doing it because i didn't want to miss out because everybody was going and they were awesome it was great and you got john his prime so I don't regret that. Thank, thankfully, I did that. But you know, with the way ticket, my point being is, with the way ticket prices are these days, it's not like, yeah, I guess we could get lucky, maybe go for a hundred bucks and be up in a nosebleed section. And but I don't know. It's like I have very fond memories of those shows, even though they were long. Seeing them on the Jersey tour and stuff like that, I, I, I mean, I have great memories of that stuff. Right. And yeah. and of listening to the music, you know, to see there are certainly acts like when we went to go see Ringo Starr. And he had his all-star band where like Ringo's, you know, doing his happy dance. You know what I mean? He's playing the drums <laughs> yeah, on every yeah. song. Right. That's my, one of my idols. You know, right. I love that. Like he's, and he you still know, sounded good. I, 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 right. Well, exactly. Let me rephrase that. He still sounded great. Right. And even though I know you were disappointed with the Who show with the song selection, I don't disagree with you as being a fan of, of your kind. I wasn't like, Oh my God, they sound horrible. This no, is they sounded really good. Sing. They right. sounded good. Yeah, I mean, if, so that so was then like, let me oh, ask you then, was, in you know, 2023, Ozzy plays a show, Bon Jovi plays a show, and who was the first one we were talking about before Ozzy? David Lee Roth, and David Lee Roth plays a show. Do you go see any I'm going of to see Dave. You're going to see Dave? I'm going to see Dave. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, the last time I saw him, his, his vocal skills didn't diminish. I, I thought he sounded great. Yeah, you which know? is funny because before those Kiss shows, there's videos online where his vocals were not the greatest, all right? And that's why let's I went be, into those Kiss shows also, not expecting much. Let's call it what it is. Every concert you're going to, they're having fixings. Right. You know, like when you would go to the salad bar, you get your fixings bar, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? You get your lettuce, your, your tomato. yeah. Right, you onion. I know you don't use any of that. <laughs> no, I don't Not use any burger of that. With no bun, with no ketchup, with no burger. Just give me the plate. <laughs> just give me a plate with air on it, please. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> there, you know, so when David Lee Roth sounded great, and I'm not, it doesn't mean like I'm accusing, but let's face facts. It's it. I was just watching, you know, a thing, one of the guys I always spoke about, Rick Beato, or Beato, Beato, whatever his name is, yep. talking about how he thinks that the auto tune has ruined you know, the music industry as far as recording. And he says, you know, the Cher song in 98, Believe, was the first time you heard that weird thing. And the certain, you know, where I can't break through and it has that weird, you know, that's what that auto-tuning is, where they do right. extreme auto-tune. And right. then they have where they just fixing. And he was playing Maroon 5, you know, She Will Be Loved, where you hear auto-tuning, where it's not uh -huh. extreme, but you know it's auto-tune. And a guy like T Pain, who is a rapper, who all his vocal sounds like that weird cheer thing, and then he goes, "But this guy can actually sing." And then yeah. they show him singing live with a guy playing, and the guy's incredible. He, but he made his name for that sound, so yeah. it's so dominant. I even saw this tonight; it blew my freaking mind. Oh boy, I'm ranting now. 
Yeah. You could, <laughs> so you could it's fucking, it's... you could fucking go on a site and type in lyrics in the style of Ed Sheeran, and mm-hmm. it randomly does a lyric in style, and you could use it. It's you really, know what I mean? oh my god! And so I'm like, I never anymore. even right. So not only, and I love technology, and mm-hmm. I and I love all the gadgets, but you could be literally with zero talent. I'm going to say zero talent, yeah. right? Get a drum program, pick out a sample beat, and drag it into a timeline. All right, I want to hear a bass line. All right, oh, that sounds good. The, the computer will match the timing and the tempo. I want a guitar part. You could pull all those things. Everything is sampled. You could get a sample for every damn instrument. <laughs> now you could say, oh, I don't know what to sing about. Okay, type in a lyric. Uh, and I, uh, Songs like uh, Ed Sheeran, songs like Dua Lupa, whatever the frick the mm-hmm. names are, these <laughs> You have these artists that I don't listen to because I'm a grouchy old fuck, right? <laughs> so then, so so now you put that in, right? Okay, I got the lyrics. I can't really sing that good. All right, let me dial up a plugin that's going to put me in pitch. So, I mean, it's egregious, <laughs> it you know. Is, I, I mean, it's it, and 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 I quite honestly, again, uh, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Let me just let me just calm down. <laughs> this this will be you the go, final time we talk in 2023. <laughs> you know, hopefully not. But anyone do a spot. I'm anyone who I who is going to listen to your channel. Do the Spotify top ten and twenty and listen to the absolute, in my opinion, crap that's on those channels. Every freaking song. Who knew in the eighties when fucking Man Eater came out that that was going to be brilliant? You know, I thought it was just a freaking <laughs> pop song of its time. Right, right. Now that's like that's like you know all those songs of the of the eighties. A freaking Corey Hart song, freaking Sunglasses at Night, is a classic. You know what I'm saying? Like um, it's just absolute garbage that's out today. Uh, you know, I just it's so it's so discouraging. And this is why I say it. And and for people who uh, and people who, who are like <laughs> me, like you, like you have like all right, I'll give you for instance, like a Brandon Fields who you've had on your show, right? He's an artist who writes his own music, he's very talented, right? And the stuff is great that he did. That that minefield record was great, right? But no one's gonna freaking hear it, unfortunately, because it, it the, the way it is, and I'm, I don't mean that to be disrespectful. It's just the right. way the industry is, you know. And he and he had, you know, he had a lot of support and and people to help him out, right? Mm-hmm. No. And no, so, as, as someone like him and someone like me, you know, I write write the stuff. I think it's really damn good, right? But then I hear this crap. It's like, and I'm putting my, you know, I'm playing every one of these damn instruments or whatever. I put a lot of time into this stuff. It's just, it just, it's it's cheap. To use a word we've used off, it's cheap. <laughs> Uh, so in other words, you're really looking forward to a lot of new music in 2023. No, no. <laughs> when I when I still when I still think of like what are the new bands that come out recently, and I say the Foo Fighters, that goes to show you where I'm at. Right, and right. I know you're about a couple levels after over me, uh, you know, above me because you've listened to like you've said recently, Paramore and uh, which I'm going to pause you there one? for a moment. You do. Yeah. I, I want you to after the show. Take a moment uh-huh. to listen to this single. This is, is it a new single. This is yeah, it's a brand new single. It's got a funk feel to it. There's some good bass in it. It's got a '70s vibe to it. Um, it's I'll probably like it then. I, I I'm curious to see if you and like I've never it. Said I, and I've never said oh, I like. I've never the, listened to them quite honestly. No, 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 no. Some it, yeah. of it is not necessarily few, and some of it's pop. Some of it is rock. This is more of like a funk type thing, and as anti new music you are i'd be curious to hear your opinion on that song and you know me and i'm not and i'm not a sh- listen you know i'll put it on a manolo record and i'll know Man- manolo, manolo. But, you know, <laughs> i listen to Leo Man- you go listen to emerson lake and palmer like yeah, i'll listen to you know if i go and in, in back of this bin here and show you some of the records that i have in there you'll be yes. scared of what i have in there yes. so i am not like oh, i'm just a rock guy i gotta listen i i love all kinds of music especially I mean, I'm particularly fond of '70s music, '80s. Yeah. You know that those those were my sweet. You know, for me, yeah, to me that was the best music that was ever produced, especially '70s, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'll be curious to see if you like because I actually posted this on my page the other and... day. And no, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that might Sorry. have been my favorite song from last year, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing them in concert this upcoming year. Um, I'm mm-hmm. hoping the more of the new music is like that. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed that. So that's mm-hmm. as I look forward to 2023, I'll say that's one of the many different concerts I have tickets for. Mm-hmm. Um, I assume you have no tickets to concerts yet next year. That's that zero tickets uh, next year <laughs> or this year, did you say? Uh, 23, yeah. 23. 
Yeah, yeah, nothing. Zero, Zero tickets. Yeah, you see, I have tickets. I'm going to see Motley Crue in a couple of weeks. I will actually be yeah. at the first show with John Five on guitar. Yeah, I remember you telling me that last yeah. week. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. so that I'm actually, I'm look, I mean, Def Leppard's there also that night. So it's going to be, be a fun night. Now, I heard some rumors that, like, that he was basically pushed out. Did you hear anything like that about Yeah, that? John Karavi's been saying that. Who knows if it's true or not, but... um, mm-hmm. yeah, Well, I heard uh, it from you then. <laughs> yeah, I just you did I hear it from, from me. <laughs> I, think, yeah, yeah, I think we spoke yeah, about yeah, it last yeah, time, yeah, but... Um, yeah, yeah. yeah um, all right, so, but would you have any interest in going to see Motley Crue um, if they came back around, like, the New York area? I I don't know if I would go, like, to the big, like, city field type show. I, yep. I think, like, a smaller place or... or smaller. I know they're still going to play, like, a... Uh, I mean, where are you going to see them? I'm going to see them in Atlantic City. So it's actually a smaller yeah, like place, like, like 7,000. Like, 6, I like 6, that. 6. I like that. I like that kind of thing. Like, you know, when we saw Kiss at, uh, where was that place we went? Um, you remember that place like, we sorry. went? It was like a smaller. This tour? On the Mon- yeah, on the Monster Tour. Remember we had basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. We went, center. we drove up to Verona. Yeah. Yeah. It was like yeah, a casino. Yeah, we were like front so, yeah. row center. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, no, no that, that was that was a fun night. That was the day I made you wait yeah. for me for like two or three hours while uh, I was stuck in traffic. That's right. <laughs> I talk about that all the time. Yeah, I'm crossing right. over to George Washington. Um, yeah. All right. So so maybe you'd go see Motley Crue. I'm actually going to see Party Grass. Have you heard about that tour? Who? <laughs> it's Brett Michaels. The, the Party Grass. <laughs> it's Brett oh, okay. Michaels okay. is that? doing like um. It's it's Brett Michaels, it's Night Ranger, I think it's uh, Jefferson Starship or Starship, whatever name they go under. Um, that's mm-hmm. the lead singer from Sugar Ray, what that Mark Mc- McGrath uh, was his name. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and Mark uh, McGuire. Mark McGuire, yeah, Mark McGuire is gonna hit some home runs for people. <laughs> so. And Sammy Sosa is gonna come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, that's good. Yeah, and it's gonna be he's he's billing it as nothing but the hits. And I got a ticket. You ready for this for twenty nine dollars? Oh, that's great. Where's yeah. that at? uh jersey um pnc or yeah i think it's like hmm. pnc art center whatever it's called these days so he's not doing the poison thing like no no they said they're that? not doing poison until 2025 2025 I, I think that's what they said 2025 will be the next time poison to us wow that's yeah. like they're taking two years off yeah, which yeah, whatever, no more, whatever they that's want. That's a robust for the rest of the guys. It, it is, but Unless you know, they, for they, me to go see Brett Michaels, who's going to do ninety-five percent Poison songs anyway. See Night Ranger, you know, I'm a big Night Ranger guy, and for twenty-nine dollars. I wonder if those guys, unless it's their choice, would resent that. Like you're going out doing ninety-five percent of our catalog. Why can't we just go out as freaking Poison? Uh, you look. I tend to agree with you, and especially, and I've shared the video on my page before where I'm. Um, Something like Talk Dirty to Me was CC's song from his previous band before he was in Poison. Mm-hmm. And there's video mm-hmm. of him doing that song pretty much identical to the version released with Poison with his old band and a different singer. So, yeah, I'm sure there's got to be some animosity there. Like, dude, what the hell, man? But look, $29 night out, I'm thoroughly third. Yeah, 29 What he just said was $29 night out. I don't care if CC's upset. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I, and I, and I get to see Night Ranger. And I get to see Night right. Ranger. So, you know, yeah. I'd go $29 just to go see Night Ranger, to be honest with you. In fact, yeah. that was probably for me the bigger draw. The fact that Night yeah. Ranger was playing. I'm hoping they do a one hour set. Um, they'll probably do nothing but the hits, but that, man, I always enjoy seeing Night Ranger, one of my favorite mm-hmm. live bands. So I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to that this year. Um, yeah. I've also got tickets to see Metallica, which did you hear what they're doing in 23? Yes. 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 So, so they're doing. Um... Like every show is going to be different. They're going to go like th- whatever city they go to, they're going to do like two or three shows and everyone's going to be different or something yeah, like that. They're doing two shows. In fact, the ticket I bought was one ticket for both nights, which is an interesting, I've never done mm. that before where you buy one ticket and covers two shows. You get the same seat for two shows. And uh, they say they're going to do two totally different set lists both nights. So, you know, it's kind of interesting thing how I'm going to see Metallica going to see Brett Michaels, like different ends of that 80s spectrum when you just went off and on your rant for a little especially, bit. <laughs> shit, just awesome. Especially when, especially when you weren't really ever a Metallica fan. I mean, I, I don't think of the vintage, you know, before the Black album, you know, right. from Ride the Lightning. I never see that really resonated with you. I can't see you getting I all bowed, you know. I had uh, Justice for All. You know, I used to think the song, even back then, I thought the song One was was incredible. Uh, the Black Album mm-hmm. is it's probably my favorite Metallica album. And I know people will say, how could it not be Kill Em All or Ride the Lightning? You know, I get that. But um, 
and there's songs I love on both of those albums, but as a whole, just the black album was the one that, that kind of lured me in mm -hmm. <laughs> even more, you know? Yeah. So, um, no, I'm looking forward to those. And I, and I love the idea of going to concerts, um, two out of three nights where the band's doing completely different set lists. You know, right. I, I spoke about a lot in 2022. I saw my chemical romance three times and they did different set lists, which meant, you know, five or six different songs each night. And they rearranged the songs in the set. So you never knew what was coming next. And I thoroughly enjoyed right. that, but to see 20 unique songs each night. I don't think I've ever seen a band do that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, those are be, some, some of the ones I have tickets for. It's interesting. I was thinking about this uh, before we started chatting. And I know you definitely won't have tickets for this one. And I don't either. But I'm going to guess probably the most popular tour this upcoming year. You want to take a guess what I'm going to say? Or you probably won't even know. I think you'll know the band. No, I won't know. Yeah. Blink-182 is doing a big reunion concert this year. It's their first show since yeah. with their original lineup since 2015. And from what I've read, and I don't have tickets, like I said, but I, from what I've read, all the shows sold out within like 15, 20 minutes. And the reason I, mm. I know about that even more so is because I've been begging for no doubt. I want them to do a reunion shows and, and get back together again. And Gwen Stefani just said in December in an interview well, maybe stuff from the 90s is coming back. Look what Blink did. They sold out like, you know, a couple of like 100 shows in 30 minutes. Mm. Maybe it's time for us again. I was like, ooh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, is, this, well is, there, is there a certain issue with that band of why they haven't gotten together for so long? I think it's just a matter. I mean, Gwen just finished a uh, Vegas residency um, all through like mid-December through late December. I think she feels, maybe rightly so, I don't know, but I think she feels that she could pull on her own. Why does she need the other three guys in the band? Which I don't agree with at all. I love No Doubt. Her solo stuff doesn't do it for me, but um, she's another one now that I think when she plays her solo shows, she does like 80% No Doubt songs or 90% No Doubt songs. So um, I guess she feels it's more money yeah. for her to be solo. Uh, I'm guessing. I've never heard they her should say just, that. So what they should do is just get her band, Poison, <laughs> and they should and they should all get together and have a band called the roasts. The roasts. It's like all the all the guys, all the guys and girls who get you know on the on because these you know these singers feel like they got to do their tours. Yep. You know, and I, unless there's some sort of problem, I just I don't know, man. I just don't like that. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan. This is the band. This is where you made the album. She, as far as I know, wasn't the sole writer of these damn songs. Nope, she was not. You know, uh, just a girl and you know, whatever the other fucking song. I think that's Tom uh, Dumont's don't riff, speak. the guitar player. I think yeah, he's the yeah, one that came up with yeah. that riff. So, yeah, yeah. You know, don't speak is don't play with me anymore. You know, they should just redo it, <laughs> you know. So, yep. So now let me, so no. kind of going back to our kiss conversation then. Um, I said I'm ready for the end of the road tour to end. And one of the reasons is I'd love to see Gene do solo shows again. So you just gave your opinion with Brett Michaels doing solo shows and Gwen Stefani doing solo shows. Now, if Kiss ends and Gene goes back to doing solo shows, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean that's always that's always a fun time. I mean he's gonna ah, have so, a great so, band. So, so you're a little inconsistent you know? here. A little inconsistent. Why am I inconsistent? Because Gene's gonna go out and he's gonna do only Kiss songs. So where am I being inconsistent? So you're saying Brett Michaels and Gwen Stefani should not go Man, out. That, but shows. this but this band is break this not breaking up. This band is ending their 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 career as a as, a, as an entity. Okay. Poison's not doing that. No doubt's not doing that. It's very well, different. No, no doubt's done nothing for ten years. So exactly. Okay. So that's my point. Like why? Okay. okay. Oh, oh, I see Bleak 182s. Look at like they look so <laughs> Gee, I, maybe I could make an extra couple of dollars. You're gonna make more money. That's uh -huh. just the thing. <laughs> right, I, right. I mean, look, I know these these Vegas residencies. They they probably play extremely well. I'm sure you know. And you yeah. go to one place or whatever. But come on, man. I, the, that's why it's very different. If if, if Kiss is no longer going to be a touring band, what is Gene Simmons supposed to do? Right. They're not going to clone Paul Stanley and the rest of the guys and 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 still try to go out as Kiss, right? So uh, be, be he's got to be careful. You never know. Yeah. I guess it's possible with Gene. You know, Gene could be but... working that up in the lab right now. <laughs> Possibly. So that's a very different thing, you know. And and Gene's got a great personality, you know. And he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be fun to watch. And he's and he's he's kind of very humble, even though people think he's an asshole because. You know, he's got this reputation, whatever. Yep. So I would certainly be on board for that. So now let me ask you, I said before also with Kiss, 
and the end of the road tour ending that I get more excited about new music releases, right? And I make, and I make Bruce Kulick his guitar player. That's all I'll say. Oh, that, that would be joyous. That would be so. What if Gene, Bruce, and I'll say Ace toured together? Is I'm that more afraid. exciting? I don't think that's Is... going to happen. No, no, no. And I, I, I personally left out Peter because I just don't think he's up to touring anymore and playing mm -hmm. shows. But if the three of them played shows together, would that be more exciting than Kiss doing shows? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And yeah. these are some of the reasons why point, I say because... I'm. Because, okay. because it's not because, because I, I, to, to use your point, I, I saw it, I didn't see them as much as you did on the end of the road tour. I think I've seen them five or whatever, how many times I'm got, I'm satisfied. And if I get to see them the last time and whatever, but, uh, it's gonna be sad. Trust me. It's going to be very, you know, sad. Yeah. I'm not only want to think about the day when we know it's over, but, um, but the good thing is that some of these guys, and uh, if, if Paul did something that I, I know you're not a big Soul Station fan, I if that stuff resonates a lot more with me. If I knew he was playing locally at a Westbury, you know, uh, music fair or whatever the name of that place is, yep. and he was going to go do something, I would go to that, definitely. So you know, then let me ask you, in, in 2023, I think Ace has said he's going to put out new music again in 23. And, you know, yeah. give him credit, he's been putting out new music every two, three years for the last decade, right? The only... The only member of Kiss really that's doing that on a regular basis. Um, I know Peter says he recorded an album years ago. Bruce is supposed to be working on an album with his band. Vinnie Vincent's been saying that he's been working on something. Those four artists, let's take Ace out of the equation because you know, he has a track record the last decade. I think he will release something. Peter Chris, Bruce Kulick, Vinnie Vincent. Do you think any of them release new music in 23? If that's an easy one. If it's going to be anybody, it's going to be Bruce. Interesting. Interesting. Why? Why? Well, you, you yeah, seem like you. You know, I would have said that two years ago, also, but he hasn't put out any new music um, for a while, and I have to assume Grand Funk is going to be really just busy. Just not make it. Just, just please don't make it a, a record of Christmas songs. That's all. That's all I ask. You know. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to make it a Christmas straight ahead rock record. <laughs> yes, I, I don't need a Christmas album. That's okay. all. Bruce Kulick, well, Christmas. You know. <laughs> when I had, I think it was Zach Thrown on two years ago. Sorry, Bruce. I don't mean. To, I'm not. I'm not trying to pick on you. <laughs> no. so if you watch what, what, the show. When, I just want to. I just want a straight rock and roll record. That's all. I or just want to. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, um, no, when I had Zach Thrown on my show a couple of years ago, I think he said they had re-recorded a or recorded, depending on your point of view, Sword and Stone, the, the outtake from the Crazy Nights album. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I'm excited at the idea of Bruce putting out an album, but I'm thinking Grand Funk is going to be on the road a lot and there's not going to be a lot of time for those guys. And, you know, I don't know if, uh, I don't think Slash is doing anything this summer. So the, the other guys might be free. But uh, I, two years ago, I thought Bruce was going to be putting out new music, you know, any month now. Now I'm not so convinced. Mm -hmm. So, but you think it'll be Bruce. Well, well look at who else is in that pool. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. So... Obviously, let's talk about this for a minute. So obviously, supposedly early last year, Vinnie Vincent was working on mixing a new album. Do you think mm. 2023 or any year, do you think that album ever sees the light of day? I think eventually it will. I just, like anything else, I just think it's going to be much longer than... The only reason why I say that now is because, again, at least... The commitments that Vinny said he was going to do and stuff like that. Yeah, he didn't have the full band. Yeah, you know, but he's at least he's do, he's done the events. He does. Isn't that a, this month? Is he doing the, the, the thing? Uh, in I think he was doing one this month. Yeah, I think he's doing one this month. Yeah. yeah. So that's what leads me to believe that it is, it is possible. Yeah. It I'll is tell you possible. why I think it's possible. And I'm not saying it's going to come out. But when I did that party of his in May of what 21 yeah i think it was may of 2021 and the same thing that he did at creatures fest he had played to tracks there and played guitar to that and did like 16 songs that night and some of them were songs that i have to believe would be on this forthcoming album um because they were not yeah. on the first two vinnie vincent albums and yeah he was playing along to them but they sounded with vocals fully mixed i mean they, they sounded really 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 well produced right um mm -hmm. I think the only thing to me that would stand in the way of that coming out is Vinny. 
<laughs> you know, just mm -hmm. being a perfectionist and thinking, no, I got to remix that. I'll look that one symbol might be off one, one millionth of a second. And, uh, did that snare drum hit it a fraction of a second too early? Let's remix the whole thing. Let's re record. That's the only thing to me that could get in the way. But to me, from what I heard, mm -hmm. and I only heard like, I think two songs or so from that, that night, um, the material is there. So mm -hmm. of those three, Peter, Chris, Bruce, Kulik, Vinnie Vincent, pretend they all put out an album on the same day and pretend you could only afford one. Which one do you go and buy? Peter, Chris. Interesting. I was gonna go with my 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 original. You know, yep. I always say the Fonz, Peter, Chris. I'm always yep. gonna go with my original musical idol. Yeah. So, but I'm not saying it'll be the best product. I don't know, but I would certainly buy Peter's record first. So let's put percentage of likelihood that you think that they'll put out an album, Peter, Chris, in 2023, Peter, Chris. Zero. Ace Frehley. 100%. Bruce Kulik. 25%. Vinnie Vincent. 5%. All right. There you have it. <laughs> so you think it's and, highly and unlikely wanna... that we'll get any new music from oh, pretty much any of them except Ace Frehley? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what were you going to say? Yeah. I was going to say, how did you feel about my, my, my percentages? And that was very quick. I was just... A... Yeah. Um... I hate to say, I think you're probably very close to accurate. Um, I want the answer to be 100, 100, 100, 100, right? I want to go out and buy an album from each and every yeah, one of them. Of course, of course. But I think the reality is um, your percentage of likelihood is probably not far off of what I would have said, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Speaking of likelihood to come out, obviously, you know about the whole Kiss Dubai the merchandise oh, yeah. that was supposed to right did you see yesterday or the day before paul stanley responded to no. somebody on twitter about it yeah so somebody no asked paul on twitter like and i'm paraphrasing dude what's going on with this merchandise here you know and paul mm -hmm. actually responded which just in and of itself surprises me that that the band's acknowledging it and here's the quote paul stanley said quote i'm on it and we'll get to the bottom of it hang tight that's surprising. Yeah, that's me. good. So let me ask you this. Do you think there's think, any think chance just... that there's resolution in 23 on that? You know, without knowing logistics of all this, the depth of what I, I remember you telling me what the, people were supposed to get. Yep. Um, you're asking me the percentage of what I think is going to happen or just do I think it could possibly. I think it could. I think because it's so early in the year and he said I'm on it. Is a very good chance they could get this resolved within well, a when I saw that comment, one of my thoughts was, you know, going back to what we were saying earlier, that this potentially could be the final shows of Kisses Tour. And we spoke about this, I think, last year. Would they do a pay-per-view special for it? The final show? Probably. Oh, of course they are. So now I'm going to think this all the way through. Could there be a concern that they want to put out a pay-per-view later this year and the Dubai thing is still hanging over their head and they feel if they don't resolve that, it may negatively impact a pay-per-view for later this year. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah. We all know that they should have been more proactive about this and more uh, communicated more out. About, and I want to say know. this just for the record, clearly this is not in Paul and Jean's court where they're not the ones that held mm -hmm. back the merchandise or whatever. Whoever this company was that they contracted with obviously screwed over the fans, right? It's it's not Paul and Gene mm -hmm. that screwed over the fans. Um, from what I've heard through the grapevine, the band also um, didn't get everything they were supposed to from that show as well. So, but but it, I was very surprised when I saw Paul comment on that. So it'll be interesting to see in twenty three well, if there is a resolution the, one way or another. The fact that he said that with, you know, we're on it, you know, whatever, you know, uh, with right. some confidence there, I'm on it, to and we'll get why. to the bottom of it, is what he said. Yeah, Hang tight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's. That's why that's why I think it'll get resolved this year. Yeah, and, and you know, I tend to, be, if we would have done this three or four days ago, I would have said, nah, that that's money. Unfortunately, that fans lost. But the fact that he commented back on it, he didn't have to. He could have just ignored the comments. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. fact that he commented made me think, all right, the, the band must be doing something about that. I hope in twenty three there is resolution for the fans. But it also then made me think, ah, uh, they must be planning a pay per view for the end of the road. Mm -hmm. you know, so so yeah. kind of, I, I yeah. started to bring all of these different things to talking about together and said. All right, so the last show will be this year. They're planning it. 
they got a pay-per-view, the China settled the Dubai thing. It's a, I, I wrapped mm -hmm. my head around all these different things that could potentially happen during 23 related to all of this. Right, right. Yeah. So then let me ask you this. The other one that we have fans talk about it all the time, that magic book, the Kiss magic book, which I hate to even... You know, it's kind of... so funny you said that, because <laughs> I was just going to say, what's the chance of the... But I didn't know if you wanted to go there, because, yeah, like, you know... Let, let's like, go there like, for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah. So what were you going to ask me? I said, what is there a better chance this gets resolved or will we see that, that, that damn magic book? That's what I was going to um, say. But I, I think said, there's I don't a know, better chance that Dubai... That. No, I think there's a better chance that Dubai gets resolved, especially now that yeah, Stanley's we... commented on it. Yeah, and I know mm -hmm. I we spoke about that offline about the yeah. magic book and because I almost bought it and you know that whole thing and yeah. it really just sounds like this is unfortunately gone down a a path yeah. that he, maybe he can't just recover from you know said uh, because it looked like yeah. it was going to be an incredible look I saw you know, that uh, the the 50 60 pages he had together in Atlanta back in whatever that was 2018 or 2019 and it looked great mm. and um yeah I'll say in 2023 I would, that would be the biggest shocker for me. If that book, forget mm -hmm. it in 2023, in my lifetime, if that book came out, that would be the biggest shocker. If it comes out in yeah. 23, I will gladly at the end of this year say I was a hundred percent wrong and eat my words, but there's no mm -hmm. shape matter form that I think I'm going to be right on that, uh, wrong on that. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> kind of keeping with some of the announcements that were just made this last week. Did you see the Foo Fighters put out a comment on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day? that they are going to be performing again and it's going no. to be they, they made it sound like it was going to be very soon hmm. yeah so to well, i me, kind of figured it that well, i've just i've just seen like i think you know dave Grohl came out for that um for the uh what is it he did the uh well they did that they did the taylor hawkins thing right that yep. was that the only thing he's been out for basically? no I mean, dave grohl has been on stage for a number of different things where he made like guest appearances here that's and there. Was, yeah right that's what i saw because i've just seen some youtube videos and stuff so yeah. i i, I shared like, one on my page a couple of weeks ago where he, he, he played with like billy eilish he did my hero acoustic or whatever right kind of like one of these christmas shows or whatever so he's been kind of all over the place yeah yeah that's why i think that's why i say i think he's ready you know yeah i think he's I ready agree. you know i agree no, I was no. excited when I got that. I texted a few of my friends that I know are Foo Fighter fans. I'm like, check it out. It looks like they're going to be performing again. I, I hope, hopefully, they'll be in the area. We'll get to see some shows this year. So, um, I would be mm. shocked at this point if, if during some time earlier, you know, the first half of 23, if if the band's not playing some shows, it'll be interesting. They said right. the band will be different, and um, I don't know exactly what that means. If they could just mean different because it's a different drama, or will they be doing something different? Who who knows? Mm. Who knows? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. New music in 23, right? I know Judas Priest is putting out a new album. Metallica is going to put out a new album. Um, Nita Strauss is going to put out a new album, which that kind of interests me a little bit. I I, I think she's a great guitar player. And, uh, you know, this year she went with Demi Lovato and, and there's a lot of discussion about mm -hmm. her turning pop. Um, and you, I know, again, looking at your record collection, you don't have anything since 1980 in your record collection, I think. Is there anything in there that you're like, 81, hey, you know, 81. 81. There's no new albums particularly uh, that you're excited about, right? Well, I wouldn't say that because, you know, well, first of all, physical product, you know, I, I will still buy a physical product, a, a, a vinyl of, okay. a, of an artist who I long supported, you know, um, like an Ozzy or something like that, or even a Judas Priest. So, uh, Adidas, it's not my. I mean, I don't really know other than being the guitar player, so that would wouldn't be something I'd be running out the door for. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I think it's a really nice thing for artists like a Judas Priest who are still putting out records in an industry. If it is a physical record in an industry that's really there's no more. As I said, there's no more record business per se. Right. You know, everything is streaming, and they don't really, you know, make the kind of money they made like they did back in the day. Yep. Although, you know, a lot of artists, they would say it look, took like four albums before they started because they all those advances they got and all the, the, the record company put up front, it takes a while to actually recoup that. You make the money, you know, in touring and stuff like that and yep. Yep. merchandise. But but um, yeah, I, I would still support the bands that I've traditionally bought, especially that it comes from the era of the music that you make fun of me for, for enjoying. <laughs> and I'll you say know, this, I think when, Priest has said they're writing for an album but it may not come out in 23 they're not sure yet so but yeah. um i think those other ones yeah let me ask you this one wolf van halen's probably going to put out his second album um 
would you be excited if Van Halen put out unreleased stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That absolutely. to me, if I'm making yeah. a wish list for wish list for 23, that may very well be number one on my list. Yeah. You know, besides another yeah, kiss I mean, I... box set or whatever, something like that. Mm-hmm. So let, let's oh, do this. Anything let's that do we... this. Go, I'm sorry. Make your prediction right now. What do you think the next kiss box set is going to be? Right. We have destroyer. We have creatures. I asked you this question last year. Neither one of us picked creatures. So we both got it wrong. So what do you think the next box set would be? Well, you know, recently there was this, there, there was this, I don't know if it was a leak of, of nothing to lose and which led to me believe to something for the first album. Right. Yep. However, I mean, it's 74, so it's not quite 50 years yet, right? Technically, was right. it February of 74? Although, according to Ace Frehley, it was 50 years ago today that he auditioned for Kiss. Now, most people think that date is wrong and that he was there in December. Um, right. But in Ace's book, he said January 3rd was the day he auditioned for Kiss. Which but either I way, if, not... you look, mm -hmm. if you look at a release date of that first album, it's right. 74. They, obviously, they were working on a lot of songs in 73. We all know that. Yep. Um, you know, I'm just thinking of 40th, 50th, 45th, you know, whatever, 35th, 30, you know. I don't know. That's hard to say. I would love it to be the, you know, the first album, a huge package for that, you know, yeah. that would be awesome. I would love you for know? it to be, I mean, I'd love to have a rock and roll over box. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, you, you, that would be, uh, and the you other could, one, you pick know. any album. Pick any album. Oh, oh, of course. All right. I really e even really monster. Okay, what what they put out a monster box? Eh, yeah, let's, maybe <laughs> they'll actually. The maybe the unreleased songs will be good ones. So maybe I would look Ooh, forward to that. Shot. No. May well, yeah. maybe they'll no, remix it and it'll be good. A good new mix. There you go. Yeah. That, that I would. You know what? That might change my opinion drastically. Interesting. Well, the likelihood of that. that being in a box. Is, I never, is... I never thought those songs were poorly written songs. Let me say right. that for the record. Yep. Yep. Pun intended. I think there's a better chance that either Peter Chris, Bruce Kulick, or Vinnie Vincent put out an album this year than we get a monster box set. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. that's never going to happen. But there will be, uh, uh, there'll, but there probably will be another big box set for Kiss this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would love to even see a live we... box set. All the different yeah. shows they recorded, put them all in there. Every one of them untouched. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that would be freaking awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. But we'll see. And obviously yeah. we're going to get more off the soundboard releases and, uh, you know, that could go anywhere. So who, who the hell knows? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to hope we get something from the seventies, something from the eighties. And, and, and there's a rumor that something I had heard, but there's yes. a rumor and I'm not going to say. Yeah. I wasn't going to put you on the spot. Kiss but let me just say, Kiss fans, you will be thoroughly thawed if this thing comes out from what I've heard. If it's 10 out of 10 toes, this might be 30 out of 10 toes. <laughs> this one to me. So Hold on to your seat. Hold on. We'll and see. your toes. And, and your, your toes. toes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, now we'll know how many people watch this all the way to the end because they'll be like, ooh, what right. are they talking about? What are they talking about? Right. Um, hmm. You know, two other things I wanted to mention before we wrap up here related to 2023. One of uh, neither one of I spoke to you about, but um, one of them impacts you. One of them doesn't. Um, in 2023, I would love to try doing a live episode. You and I one week. I'm not even sure exactly okay. how that works. <laughs> I would love no, I, to well, get people to be able to comment and, and give us questions or whatever. Um, as I think about, you know, this is show 220 something. I don't even know anymore. I was like, how could I do something different in 23? And I was like, it's a nice to do a live show. You tell people ahead of time, it's going to be Thursday at eight o'clock, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. um, people come on. They can, can do that questions. through YouTube. They can do, yeah. they can do that through YouTube. And they have a whole live thing. I can find that out. My, okay. Yeah, my, so. good friend, my good friend knows how to do all that stuff. I would love to try to do something. With look, the chat, with a chat. You yeah, know, we, we, we may chat, get nobody you know? watching live. I mean, so. You guys suck. Yeah, exactly. That, that'd be we the biggest know. set of all. We're going to be on live yeah. and then nobody shows up. But I'm okay. Yeah, that'd be but funny. I just think it would be interesting to kind of try to do something really different like that. So it was one of the things I was like, yeah, as we go into a new year here, how can we do something <sighs> different and liven this up? And um, I was thinking about how some of the comedies, especially in the 90s, 
would try to do like an entire episode in one take where they film the whole thing. And mm-hmm. I was like, all right, mm-hmm. that's interesting, but but that's kind of what we do here already. What could I do different? I was like, a live mm-hmm. episode, a live episode mm-hmm. in front of a studio audience. <laughs> I, think, I think we should do one by the pool during the summer, you know, Ooh. pool cast, we'll call a pool it. Cast. Is that a podcast? <laughs> a pool yeah, cast. There. I like Don't steal saying. my freaking idea. Right? <laughs> a pool cast. And you know what? Then you and I could actually those- be in the same room. Oh, the same. Room. We gotta get those chairs. Yeah, yeah. But we gotta get those chairs in Chris Kiss Meets the Phantom when you know, like Ooh, when they do we they get the robes the also? Yeah. Oh hell, hell yeah, we get the robe. You can wear your Chewbacca robe. I was gonna say, I'll do get I get the Chewbacca robe? robe out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, while we're recording, am I allowed to go for a swim if I get too hot outside? You good? You can. <laughs> okay. I don't know if people want to see uh, that. I, no, I don't think so either. <laughs> uh, ben, you take this question. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, 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 exactly. Oh man. Only 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 if you could clean the pool and stub your toe and trip over the, <laughs> thanks, over the and trip over the diving board. Oh, thanks. As I thought I almost broke my toe two years ago doing that. <laughs> oh, man. oh um, if only there was surveillance camera on that. If only. <laughs> Thank God there wasn't. You'd be like rewind hit play, rewind hit play. <laughs> You'd oh, be man. like nonstop on Forget that. It. You'd be nonstop. Yeah. You know, and I'll say the last thing, and I don't think I've ever mentioned this to you, and this will not happen in 23, but if I'm going to ever do this, I might have to start in 23. I've had a number of, not a number, a few people message me saying, hey, Mike, you should write a book about how you started your Mm. podcast, how you got all these people, what it was like to interview some of these people. And at first I was like, yeah, nobody wants to read a book from me at all. But then after I had a few people ask me, I was like, that's an interesting one. So it's not going to happen in 23, mm. but I actually, the other night started to look, well, if I wrote a book, what would all the different chapters of the book be? And I came up with 12 different chapters. So who knows? Yeah, cool. I don't think that'll be a 23 thing, but that'll be in the back of my mind to maybe start thinking about what I have. Nice little that. project. That's yeah. A nice little yeah. project. Yeah. Because, you know, I, like I have that. all this time on my hand, you know, and, uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. you know, I, you, you know, I got the room that I record here in redone six months ago because we had a flood and I still haven't mm. had time to hang stuff on the walls again. Mm. Um, and that's been mm. six months, but yeah, yeah, why not take on another project like writing a book that, you know, I have plenty of time for that. I, I, <laughs> I, I agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll see, but, um, Anyway, buddy, who knows? It's the start of 2023. Mm. You know, one of the things I love to do is at mm. the end of the year when we do our year-end wrap-up, we'll go back, we'll listen to this. I like to see what we speak about today and what ended up happening, not happening. Maybe uh, Bruce, Peter, Vinny all put out albums. and like, man, we have wrong. Uh, maybe the Kiss Box set ends up being something totally different than what maybe the end of the road tour is the never ending road tour, you know, um, Mm -hmm. maybe Mm -hmm. Dave Lee Roth goes on a 50 show tour with Ozzy Osbourne, they co-headline, who the hell knows, you know, possibly never know. You never know. It's it's always interesting to me to see what we think now, the beginning of the year compared to the end of the year. And I put this question out to, to all the people watching you know, some of the topics we covered here, what do you guys think? Will we see any of these bands, these legacy artists on the road? You know, even somebody like White Snake with David Coverdale's had health issues. Will we see him and, and the band back on the road again? Um, I'm not so sure. Um, Kicks had their drummer literally, uh, I think, pass out uh, like a month ago during the show, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of scary when you, and I, I'm sure you saw this, everybody saw last night on Monday Night Football, how, Somebody had a heart attack during the middle of the game. And um, it just kind of reminded me the guy was only 23 or 24 years old during, you know, heart attack in the game. It's horrible. Um, it just makes you remember, you know, these guys that that we all love are 60, 70 years old. And there's no mm-hmm. promise for tomorrow. And, you know, when you see mm-hmm. kicks playing a show and they literally have to stop the show in the second to last song or right before the last song starts because their drummer has to be rushed to the hospital it makes you realize mm-hmm. that you know, time is short here, but I do think we'll see mm-hmm. kicks back out on stage in 23. But, um, you know, whether it's White Snake, Ozzy, David Lee Roth, um, who do you guys, when you're watching, do you think we'll see any of those bands on stage during this year? Who would you want to see? Do you mm-hmm. want to see Bon Jovi back with, with Richie Sambora in 23? Do you think the Kiss Tour is going to actually end this year? Um, I'd love to hear everybody's comments on those. And if there's anybody that we haven't spoken about, mm-hmm. you know, feel free to put those in the comments as well. And, um, mm-hmm. I think, buddy, that's about everything that we had as we look forward to this next year. I could also say I look forward to us doing a plethora of shows this year. <laughs> yeah. And I actually have one thing that I'm going to go ahead. Ooh. You know, it's, it's almost for, for, for our viewers. Bonus. For me, this is a bonus person. topic. Yeah, this is, 
this is for me personally, a, 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 a selfish, unselfish or whatever plug, or not even so much a plug. I am pleading to the people out in, in our community or our fans. If you know anybody who has any interest in social media <laughs> or, or posting or helping me with my social media, I will pay you. OK, I am looking for somebody who is passionate about doing social media. I, you know, I've been thinking about this and you get on me and for very good reason. I'm terrible at my own thing. I have you want to talk about plethora. I have a plethora of music that I can release this year. I've been holding back on a lot of stuff, multiple projects because it just goes out in the universe and it dies. So I'm looking for somebody who can just handle my social media stuff, have build a relationship. I will pay you and just have an ongoing thing for I'm talking about for a year or maybe more. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody who's interested who watches our show or knows somebody, comment, reach out to us, you or me or whatever. I know you would be more than yeah. happy to, to help me out with that. So I'm just throwing that out there for my goal, for what I would love to accomplish for this year is to be much better than I've been traditionally. And I was going to say this when you were saying the likelihood of Bruce putting out an album or Peter putting I out know, an you... album, I was going to say, well, that there's maybe a better chance that they put out an album than you even make one Facebook post to publicize your music. <laughs> I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> but I, said, I was trying no, to no, beat look... you to the poet. Yeah, 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 but um, no, look, yeah. I, and I hope for you that that you could find somebody to do. I wish I had the time and I could do it for you because you know, your mm -hmm. music deserves to be heard. It should be heard. You've got a lot of projects, including a whole Thank Kiss you. cover project that, you know, I, I think mm -hmm. people would, I know I played one of the songs, your, your cover of Calling Dr. Love for a couple of people last year, and they were blown away. Mm -hmm. First few people were like, wait, 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 that's not the original, that's a cover. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, oh my God, didn't that. really nail that drum sound and really nail the feel of Peter Chris playing the drums and the vocal mm -hmm. that you get. I mean, it's just everything about it is frigging top notch. And, and yeah. people Thank you. should hear that. And they should hear the, the original music also. So yes, mm -hmm. if you, if you, and I don't think you have to even be that much of an expert. I think you just need to have a little bit of time on your hands. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be, I hope you could find somebody to help you with that. Thank you. So I figured just, you know, use your platform, hopefully yes. to do yes. maybe find somebody to do that. Yes. You know? You and I didn't even talk about that, so you no. probably you no. Well, we spoke me? about it because I abuse you all the time that you're you're not. Uh, right. I'll text but you I didn't like say right, I was gonna, yeah. right, but you didn't say you were gonna. You didn't say you were yeah. gonna mention it on the show. And I know you have a few other things, and we'll be on another episode or two coming up soon. A few things coming up in 23 that'll be exciting, and we'll mm -hmm. be talking about one of those on upcoming episodes. So, um, mm -hmm. I think that's a wrap, yep. my friend. Yes, sir. Mr. All righty. Well, on that note, then. Double Ringo. <laughs> the first one, the first one for 2023. That is right. Yes. All righty. Mm. Later, bud. <laughs> Happy New Year. Later, everybody. pal. All righty. There you have it. I'd like to thank all my viewers and listeners for always watching, and I wish you all a great and happy new year in the year 2023. Let this be the best one yet. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments on what you think KISS is going to become by the end of this year and what it'll be like for them in the future. Are you like me, looking forward to the end of the road, wrapping up, or do you hope that they'll keep going forever? Also, let us know what music and what artists you're looking forward to in the upcoming year. We'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And Happy New Year, everybody.